All right, so we're going to keep on going here. Part two of this series where we're going to pick up is really quick. Um, we're leaving off talking about the history of what Brian Wright has been doing here in part two um, before we jump into who the big boards are uh, for each pick, which we're going to do here in a second um, in this video. Um, in 2020, Brian Wright went to the big board and chose – Devin Vassell over a lot of players that were very, very good and have turned out to be very good since this draft. Players like Tyrese Halliburton, uh, Aaron Neesmith is pretty good, uh, Joe Anthony, Isaiah Stewart, Pokashevsky, Sadiq Bey has proven to be way better than the 19th pick. Uh, Precious Achua, Tyrese Maxey, um, the Spurs were able to snag him because the Phoenix Suns select Jalen Smith right before uh, and made him available. So Devin Vassell checks a lot of those boxes that we were talking about before. And in 2021, they selected Joshua Primo over guys like Chris Duarte, Moses Moody, uh, Corey Crispert, Alfred Shangoon, who had a great season with, with Houston this year, Trey Mann, Kai Jones, who, who a lot of Spurs fans were hoping the Spurs were going to select Jalen Johnson, Keon Johnson, one of my favorites, Isaiah Jackson, another one of my favorites, um, so the Spurs were looking for upside and best player available over any type of need at the big man position, which the Spurs have needed now for a few years. They that's that's the way that they're going. If you look at this comment thread in in, in my mock draft 2.0, it's awesome. Uh, Paul F. Right. So the Spurs have a huge need at power forward and you have them taking two guards as their first round picks and a small forward at pick 25. Thank God that you will not be making decisions for this team. Um, and this thread was such an interesting thread. That's why I pulled it out. It was such a, a, a cool debate, and I encourage the debate. If you want to say that I'm crazy and all that stuff, and and there's some people out there that agree with me that came out and started you know debating back and forth, and it was just a cool, um, respectful debate on you know which direction the Spurs should go in. And really, there's no wrong direction. It's just. What's your preference? What do you like? You know, do you like whiskey? Do you like vodka? You know, like, you know, what, what do you like? You know, do you like steak? You like chicken? You know, so, you know, the Spurs prefer to draft best player available, I think, because they're still looking for that home run, right? You need a home run, right? In order to be very good in the playoffs, you need one of those guys who's a for sure guy, number one dude. And, you know, unless we're going to target Zach Levine or something like that in the offseason, we're, we're drafting for him. We're looking for him in the draft. That's what we do in San Antonio. We are not a big market, so we look for that upside where we can get it. And where can we get it? The draft. So sometimes that means that comp healthy competition is good, right? Sometimes that means like guys like Lonnie Walker, you know, doesn't get re-signed after his rookie deal. He gets extended, but then doesn't get re-signed, right? Some some stuff like that are just you know things like that are going to happen, and it's going to be the next guy up to try to earn that spot right so what we're going to do now is move on from the draft process that was the whole part one of the show thank you guys for for hanging out and tuning in with us and and uh interested if you're interested in the spurs draft this year it's because you know there's unlimited possibilities right they have four picks they have the ninth pick the 25th pick the 20 the 20th pick and the 38th pick right skip skipped over there anyways but um you know there's a lot of different directions that this that this draft can go and if you want to know who are the main guys at each pick i've tried to put this board together for us and again like i said you know if paulo bancaro you know he's not on this list why because he's supposed to be gone by pick nine would he be on my main board of like all the players in the draft sure yes he would he's awesome he would be ahead of every single player i have on my board um, but he's not expected to be there. So he's not going to, I'm not really going to waste my time with that. So um, let's get into pick number nine. Let's talk about who should be available at pick number nine and where my preferences lie on who they should be selecting in this draft. So at pick number nine, we got guys like um, Benedict Matherin, Johnny Davis, Shaden Sharp, Terry Eason, or Tari Eason, Jeremy Sokan, and Jalen Duren. Um, these are my top six guys, you know, for the Spurs to pick, I'd be happy with any of these guys in a Spurs uh, Jersey at the start of next season, right? If we're looking to go guard, you got six, seven shooting guard, 
Benedict Matherin out of Arizona with a 6'9 wingspan. He's 20 years old. Johnny Davis is 20 years old as well. Uh, 6'5 shooting guard, Shaden Sharp, 19 years old. Obviously, he he got into Kentucky a little bit late, uh, but a lot of upside with these, these three guys right here. If you're looking to get a little bit bigger, you can't go wrong with um, Tari Eason and Jeremy Sokan, right? Tari Eason is 21. He's a little bit older uh, than Jeremy Sokan here at 19. Also has the longer wingspan, though, at 7'2 versus 7 foot. And um, yeah, I like Tari Eason, man, between these two guys, if you're going to ask me. Um, but Jalen Duran, at 18 years old, 6'11", 7'5", wingspan. The defensive possibilities with this guy are off the charts. If the Spurs, you know, are not keep planning on keeping yaka Pertle around long term and we're not able to get deandre ayton you know like a good insurance policy might be jalen duran there at pick number nine um and if i had to pick one out of these six um you know it's it's going to be a close a close call between jalen duran and benedict matherin i think if you're asking me i think you go with guard you go with that upside at the guard position or um you take this young freakish athlete man that might turn out to be something something special maybe not a great offensive hub or anything like that but he's going to be able to clean up a lot of a lot of weaknesses that you might have on the defensive end so you know that's my pick right there for number those are my top six for number nine sorry and at pick number 20 these are things start to get a little interesting right um you got guards like terquavion smith ty ty washington blake wesley Malachi Bronham, small forwards like Bryce McGowan's, Jalen Williams, Usman Jang, center Mark Williams. I do not really expect to be there at 20, but crazier things have happened, right? So if he is there at 20, uh, I think that's like a best case scenario for the Spurs. You know, if they don't go Jalen Duran at number nine, and they go maybe Tari Eason or Benedict Matherin, Johnny Davis, something like that, and they can still snag Mark Williams at number twenty. That's you're looking at a at a few, at a really good possible night for the Spurs. Um, but I'll tell you what, the Spurs have looked at um, and interviewed with a couple of these guys like Terquavion Smith and Ty Ty Washington. They've also met with Usman Jang. Um, they've either interviewed or worked them out, right? So that just kind of goes to show you where the Spurs are, where their mindset is as well. You know, I really do not mind the Spurs taking any of these guards. Terquavion Smith, to me, is not a bad look. At 19 years old, what he's able to do uh, with the ball in his hands is is pretty special. Um, I would really prefer if the Spurs went ahead and took small forward 6'6", uh, out of Nebraska, Bryce McGowan's. Uh, I love the way he plays. I love his athletic upside. I think he's a modern day wing. He has that modern day lanky Jason Tatum type body. I think he has that type of, uh, of future, uh, you know, with upside Blake Wesley is another guy who has that dog in him. Who's just one of those dudes. If you go look at his highlights, he's jamming it on fools and he's just coming up big. He has a really nice transition game and he's just, you know, a really tough dude. Malachi Bronham is a bucket. He's one of those guys that actually is just looking to get his shot off as much as possible. It reminds me a lot of DeMar DeRozan in that sense, you know. So there's some good young talent here, 19 years old, 19 years old. Ty Ty Washington is a point guard who can light it up, you know. We really don't have a fluid um scoring point guard, you know, in Trey Jones or or, or DeJounte Murray. Ty Jones might I mean Ty Ty Washington might be one of those dudes. Jalen Williams at uh, 6'6", has a 7'2 wingspan, extremely talented out of Santa Clara. Like seeing him play as well. Usman Jang, uh, 7-foot wingspan uh, out of the NBL. You know, he's French, 6'10". Uh, very interesting prospect there. He could put the ball on the floor and do a lot of interesting things. And, of course, we know, like, the de- I've been talking about this guy for a while. You know, I, I really hope he ends up on the Spurs team. I don't know where, but... I know it's not going to be 9, um, 20, he might not be there. So I don't know if the Spurs do decide to move up. I wonder if it would be for someone like Mark Williams. But, you know, these the, these are this is kind of my big board heading in 
to pick 20. I hope to see maybe at least half of these guys available at pick 20. And I like to see the Spurs snag one of these guys up. So let's take a look at who is going to be available for the Spurs at pick number 25. Um, Kendall Brown, I think is, is one of those fan favorites, right? And the Spurs actually had him into workout recently. Um, and he is a monster. He's an unbelievable weapon that you can have on your roster. Uh, he's a freak athlete, you know, can do a lot of things with, with his athleticism and, you know, we'll see how he develops moving into the later st- uh, parts of his career. But here at pick number 25, let me back up here for a second. I really want um the spurs to use this pick to get a little bit bigger right even if you go guard guard you know at pick number nine and at pick number 20 at pick number 25 um these these are the guys that i would like the spurs to look at and that's kendall brown dalen terry out of arizona wendell moore um, who i had them selecting 25 in, in a mock draft i did um six six small forward seven foot wingspan Kent, uh, wendell moore out of duke nikola jovich is a very skilled international player uh 611 with a seven foot wingspan jake uh laravia out of wake forest is a very excellent pick and pop dude ej liddell is uh an extremely skilled power forward out of ohio state um and then maybe your your third or fourth best big man in this draft walker kessler out of auburn seven foot seven five wingspan uh i think he was like third in blocks in college or, or this past year so he's He's a, a skilled big also as well. He he's he has great hands. He's a smart uh, screen setter and all that type of stuff. But you kind of it kind of reminds me of Jakob. I really don't see the Spurs going in that direction with with Walker Kessler, but I mean any of these other guys that I have here on the board are long, athletic, long wingspans at small forward or her, who are modern day like, you know, three fours. You know what I mean? Who can all ball? All these guys are are pretty dang good. That's what I'm saying, you know, there's there's a lot of um, debate over the Spurs trading up or, or keeping these picks. And, you know, when I'm after all this research that I've done so far, keeping these picks are it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea at all. So let's take a look at, you know, who would be available uh, at pick number 38. The Spurs have worked out Alondis Williams as a point guard out of Wake Forest who has unbelievable core vision, who is a great point guard um, running that squad. If you go look at his uh, highlights, uh, has great feel for the game. Max Christie out of Michigan State's a shooting guard who has a lot of potential in my eyes. Um, Italy's Gabriel Procida met with Manu at the Combine. Maybe there's some interest there. Uh, Josh Minot out of Memphis, 20 years old, 6'8", power forward. Man, I would love to get that guy on my team. And, and Dalen Terry, maybe both of those guys from the previous pick. Now we're talking about being really long and athletic. Um, Jabari Walker, uh, 6'8", small forward out of Colorado. Kai Soto, 7-2 uh, power forward center out of the NBL, who was uh, very productive in the NBL this past season. Um, and a lot of a lot of uh, support for Kai Soto ending up on the Spurs, maybe with this 38th pick. And actually, Kai Soto, man, I, you know, if, I, if I'm going to give you my evaluation of, of what his future can be like, if the Spurs don't pick him up, I, I really would like to see him on the summer roster. You know, if he goes undrafted, it's not the end of the world for Kai Soto. I think um, there's still a possibility of maybe he ends up on their summer league squad and proves himself there. So he's definitely a talented player with uh, some upside, definitely at 7-2. Um, and if they're looking also to get bigger here at 38, I wonder if Christian Coloco, center out of Arizona, another raw prospect at 22 years old, 7-4 seven, seven, wingspan, can just do a lot of things defensively to clean up uh, for you. So I kind of provided some guards, forwards, and centers for you, uh, for each pick. Um, at least the ones that are at the top of my list, uh, going into draft night. Um, you know, the Spurs probably have triple the amount of players that I do. They have triple amount of the, the data to assess, not just game film and all that stuff. So, um, they're making smart choices over there. They're evaluating everything. Um, but those are some of the the picks that I would like to see the Spurs go home with, you know, draft night. So um, right when we get back for part three of this series, we're going to talk about mock drafts and rankings. I'm going to put all these players on one board and kind of tell you where they stand and go over a couple of possibilities where I'll give you like my each 
you know, my picks, some mocks for each one of my picks. It'll be a lot of fun. We get right back. <laughs> 